crux of the question is when to add to a strong bullish signal, but I'll let you guys walk through that. Awesome. So the, 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 <laughs> the real answer is it depends, you know, so um, I'm sorry if I can't give you a straighter answer, but it depends. However, the low end of the risk range comes when you least expect it, right? So Keith says that all the time. I've seen it time and time again. Anybody who's been a hedge subscriber for probably more than, you know, maybe three months uh, certainly has uh, can tell you that that the loan of that risk range will come when you least expect it. Um, the the real answer, I guess, or the recommendation from 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 my my seat at least is uh, try to incorporate or you need to incorporate the three factors into your decision making. So those three factors that influence Key's fast signal is price, volume, and volatility. Uh, these components, when combined, right, have the potential to provide a better understanding of when to execute, right? So timing and sizing, I continue to say, and I've said, you know, this is only episode eight, but I've said it a number of times on the Weekly Notebook Review, on Twitter Spaces, um, timing and sizing are the two hardest components of this game, right? This is a really bloody hard game. And, you know, if you, but, but, but leveraging the, that three factor model, or at least those three factors into your decision making can help you better understand when to execute, right? So the timing and sizing, so price, volume, and volatility. In this example with gold, right, you, you're going to see if, uh, you know, price. So in this case, you know, you're ideally going to want to see, you know, price moving like lower on weaker volume and GVZ volatility kind of falling at the same time, right? So um, those are, that's kind of your, your best setup. Now, if, uh, you know, price is going up, right? You know, in terms of like, you um, a strengthening signal or, or 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 an asset class kind of gaining momentum, you're going to see you know price moving higher um, on big volume, right? On good volume, and and again that volatility, you know that can be a little tricky sometimes. GBZ does or you know gold vol, you know basically volatility will kind of break out just because of like the momentum. But you know um, so again anyway, I won't get into those weeds right right quite white quite quite now on uh, abg but um just want to kind of reiterate that fact right so there are components there um that that will allow you to assess and you can track this thing so for gold right you're going to want to have gvz um gvz that's gold volatility it's a it's a staple product from i believe cboe um you can have that and you can have the gold price, right? So you can have uh, spot gold and you get that risk range and the risk range product. Um, so for gold um, and you can use that to have a, an immediate term kind of range to, you know, when to kind of buy and sell GLD. Now, um, as assets with strong momentum, you know, they often maintain momentum. So that can be a tricky thing, right? In terms of, okay, what I just talked about in terms of like paying up for an asset. So when that momentum breaks though, even temporarily, aka on a counter trade or trend move, you know, patience can be your big, biggest assistant or assistant um, to better execution. So patience is always key, right? And if those assets approach or break that trade trend levels, you know, that'll, that's going to dictate the sizing within the portfolio during those moments of time, right? So if we're close to the trade line, maybe you kind of, you know, you don't, you know, you don't add quite as much or you keep it on a bit of a tighter leash. Same thing with, with you know, if you're close to the trend line, um, if you're close to the trend line, you really want to try to get reconfirmation because you're sort of in between those two, those two zones, especially from like a momentum standpoint, right? So uh, Chris Moyer, big shout out to my, to my boy at, at Thousand Air FX, um, has a great playlist on YouTube, you know, which uh, I shared in the replies to this post. I'd highly encourage you to watch, listen, learn from, from another brilliant Jedi within the community. And he really has a, a, a great couple of videos. I think there's three in particular in terms of, you know, um, managing kind of within the risk range. Now, what I have put together is um, a, a review. So, uh, General, if you don't mind pulling up that next slide, slide nine. Awesome, man. Thank you. Um, this is specifically on gold, right? right? So gold, the last, um, we'll call it going all the way back to November. And... And really, so let me just blow it up on my side. Sorry. Um, so, you know, gold moved. If you can kind of see that first, um, that first kind of top left green box, um, 
so that that that's when gold moved to bullish trend. The risk range was 1621 to 1776. So just for clarification purposes, this is actually the ETF GLD, uh, but I'm kind of referring to here the actual gold, uh, like the gold gold commodity itself. Um, so that that moved to bullish trend on, um, I believe it was November 11th or 10th, um, and so. Yeah, so that, that that's when that happened. So just to give you an idea as to kind of where where we stood. And then uh, Keith, um, via you know both a combination of Macro Pro and ETF Pro, added GLD at a minimum sizing um, on, I believe it was the, well, you can see there's that next kind of like big box. Um, I believe it was, uh, if memory serves, I did this all last night, but if memory serves, it was the uh, 15th, I believe, um, 15th of November. And so he, he added that at a minimum sizing. Uh, and then at the same day, he also added it to ETF pro on the long list. Right. So, um, that's a good opportunity right there. If, uh, and, and again, I'm sorry if you weren't a subscriber back in November. Um, uh, but at the same time, you have to understand that, you know, th these, these processes are kind of the, the inventory within our portfolios, you know, they may have been there for longer than just uh, a, a day or two or a week or a month. Uh, you know, UUP, we've been long since, you know, since last year, since the beginning of last year. So uh, again, you know, inside of the Macro Pro product, I've mentioned this a couple of times. And again, you know, I understand it's a premium product, but you also kind of get a better glimpse into what's transpiring behind the scenes and, and understanding kind of when and where Keith is touching uh, his portfolio, especially on his within, and specifically within his long only book. Uh, so the next day he added 50. So he added to his minimum sizing. Then he added 50 basis points. The following day, he had another 50 basis points the next day. So those are those three green boxes there at the bottom. You know, two days later, it was it was up again. I don't know what the percentage change was, but uh, it was up and he sold 100 basis points. So he basically sold those 250 basis points that, that he got, that he that he um, added to. Now, again, this is just in the re-rank product, which is really his morning moves, right? So it comes out kind of late to mid morning. So he may have been on those red days, adding adding more to it than than really kind of what's expressed within the you know specific re-rank product. But what you can you can tell there within the re-rank, which is going to get adjusted the following morning, is you can see how it moves inside of the inside of his portfolio. So it's going to kind of move up and down as he buys and sells that asset. Uh, so again, he sold you know. So again, just to reiterate, he sold 100 basis points two days later, sold another 50 basis points um, two days after that. And then, you know, it it really kind of, and again, you know, this is what you got to remember is that in this scenario, you know, broke out to, to, to bullish trend there um, kind of a week or so before. And then really in this example, it, it it likely, again, I don't have the trend line from back then, but it likely kind of on his signal was retesting some of that, you know, some of that trend level that it just kind of uh, pushed through. So, you know, he's kind of risk managing it um, in a bit of a, probably in a, with a bit of a tighter leash because of exactly that scenario. Not sure whether it's going to be kind of, you know, reconfirm um, that bullish, that bullish trend and really move higher or if it's going to break down further. So anyway, um, you know, once it kind of like reconfirmed that, you know, moved higher and moved off that trend line, you know, on that first pullback, he had to 50 basis points. You know, a few days later, he he subtracted, you know, he 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 subtracted 50 basis points. Now, again, I, you know, he touches that port, he's touched that portfolio a number of times. So I'm not really going to go through back and forth each 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 individual piece of like where 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 he he bought and sold GLD. But I just really wanted to re like kind of show you here in terms of, you know, the one, the Macro Pro re-rank product really gives you, a, well, even if you don't, you know, trade it the same way he does, it gives you a really great, you know, example and, and analysis into how he's moving his 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 book or his inventory up and down within the portfolio, and that really, you know, ties into one of those other questions from today, which I'll get into in a minute. Uh, but to uh, but to really kind of you know draw some focus on that blue box. You know, the, you know, if you're kind of studying this and doing it diligently and to answer your question about, hey, like gold has moved higher and been, has been really strong. Well, you know, it's, if you kind of take a look at it, there's kind of that month of December, it really just, you know, and had some, some down days, it kind of bounced around in a pretty decent band. So you could have been adding, adding, it, it was remaining bullish trend that whole time, right? Um, it was putting in, you know, most of the time higher highs. Uh, but really what you should have noticed on, on, um, 
I think it was a, that first of Jan that January third, our ETF Pro re rank, I believe, is when that came in. Um, that 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 risk range went from one sixty four to one seventy three, uh, so that was a higher low and a big higher high. So I, that was starred and circled in my in my notebook, being like, "Hey, you need to get bloody long or longer gold because this has got a great signal strength." And this is I've talked about this a number of times, but that's a key component when somebody's making a higher low and a higher high, and that higher in particular, higher high in particular, is putting in basically new new highs, whether it be on a one month or three, or ideally on a one month and three month basis, you know, that's, that's exactly what you want to see. So from the macro pro product, I just want to kind of show you uh, the last kind of, you know, within the last week or so, he, he added 50 basis points there. And, and, and part of the question was, do you, do you, um, do you add to it more quickly? Right. And, and, and that's exactly what Keith did. He, uh, he, he sold 50 basis points on that move higher on, on kind of call it the fifth. And, and then he, he bought it back, you know, the next day, that same amount that he sold, he, he bought it back the following day on, on some weakness right before it really started to move higher. So, um, and then the other thing too, on that bottom there, and I mentioned this in terms of volume, right. You know, down, it, it was down, he bought 50 basis points. It was down on below average volume. So if you kind of follow that arrow down, I know it's kind of hard to see, but, um, you know, what you'll see is that blue box is kind of average volume at time. And then that red box is the, or that red line, excuse me, is the actual volume on that day. And it was down on below average volume on significantly below average volume. So, uh, that's a great setup to even in a, a bullish trend and, and the fact that it wasn't on at the low end of the risk range, or at least the, the trend range that we get on a weekly basis. Uh, but you know, you can see when you combine that with the macro pro product and the re-rank that he, he was a buyer and, and, uh, and added to it ahead of this, this recent move higher. Uh, now, again, that, that red and green box there on, on the far right, is this week's risk range from the ETF Pro uh, trend range product, right? So those are, that's the trend risk range, um, and and you're absolutely right. It's been uh, it's been basically uh, hovering around the top end of the range, and and same thing with the actual underlying commodity from the risk range product itself. It keeps keeps kind of pushing up to the top end of the range. Um, now, conversely, in general, if you don't mind sharing that that next that next slide there um, on the short side, right? XLY. Uh, RTA on 111, it was up on below. And then, so it, the, sorry, excuse me, the RTA came in uh, two days ago on, on XLY to short it. And then the following day, okay, yesterday, and I was doing this last night, but it was up on, on below average volume. So you can see there maybe a little bit more clearly, you know, thumbs up, right? Um, it was up on below average volume. So that's a really good indicator for, uh, you know, it's pushing the top end of the risk range. Um, and, and again, these things are dynamic, right? So that, again, I just want to show you there that that risk range was from, you know, the price volume and volatility metrics from basically Friday's close. And those components have shifted. Now, some of you may say, oh, well, then that risk range doesn't really um, doesn't really matter anymore. And and that's not true, right? It's, it's uh, you can kind of adjust it or visualize kind of what that would look like. The other thing too, is you can go back in time from, um, you know, basically go back to mid December, which is, you know, and, and go pick a, a, a Friday close that kind of mirrors the current price, you know, that could give you a little bit of a better idea. That's where you're kind of thinking outside the box. Again, volatility metrics, you know, might not be the same because we're down at, you know, 19 vol here, 18 vol. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's ways to get to the answer without having, you know, the keys to the kingdom from, from Keith. And, and I certainly don't have those, but I've, I've been able to put that together. And I know many within Hedge Eye Nation has done the same. So I uh, just wanted to kind of, you know, reiterate that, that that volume piece, you know, when you're looking at something, yeah, you know, it might be, you know, considered quote unquote painful in terms of that RTA, right? It was going against you, but that volume component was telling you as well, you know, as price was higher, you know, and uh, the setup was there to, to continue to kind of short that on the, on the short side incrementally. Uh -huh.